Hi, and welcome to No Borders Radio at noBordersRadio.co.uk right here for the public law every Friday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 a.m. GMT. Just kind of late in the UK, but it'll be on the uh, YouTube channel as soon as it's rendered and, and done. I'm here with of course, oh, as this is the public law with Bo and Tammy. How are you, Bo? Hello, good. How are you? Great. Earlier today, um, across my desk came a documentary called The Perfect Vagina. Now, the law merchant is suing or selling females, quote, the perfect vagina. So I approached you and I said, okay. In these uh, documentaries and in these articles, telling females what males like, what males want, and which allows the enablement to sell the female all sorts of stuff and garbage. Again, I I came to you with this documentary, and and you just looked at me like I was nuts. <laughs> yeah. These things are crazy. So. Well, I could care less about that and more about, um, you know, what I like in a female, uh, that she doesn't sell me out to the law merchant. Right. And we went into detail. I mean, I know this is embarrassing for a lot of people, but you have to hear it. Today I had another altercation with a female false flag as well as a male false flag on one of the threads on Facebook. And when I called him out for being false flags, the male, of course, was an, effem an effeminate male running around and dancing around with all the bells and whistles. And the female was dancing around with all the bells and whistles, pretending to be me. And uh, you know, I let her have it. I called her out. I called the male false flag out on this men's rights site. And, you know, it was funny because they deleted the thread. However... Not before, of course, I copied the conversation, as always, and I posted it on Father Strike, my blog roll, so that others can see. And this is what we're up against. We are up against uh, these, quote, masculist males and these, quote, females that are not. They're actually uh, prolific false flags. They're paid agents, and they're paid to promote civil war. And that's what got my thread uh, deleted the entire thread deleted because I kind of mentioned that and I said you know promotion of civil war is a war crime itself and immediately that thread the entire thread was taken down so to all of the females considering such as labiaplasty and female genital mutilation to please the male what do you have to say about that as the male Um, just, it's another thing, it's just crazy as a soup sandwich. But it's... I mean, Rush wrote this uh, instrumental, and I think the title says it alone. Uh, Leave That Thing Alone. Right. That's the name of the song, I think that is off of the, uh... Oh, man. <laughs> Memory stacks on that one, it's, uh album before the Clockwork Angels, I believe. I love their music. But, yeah. Leave that thing alone. I mean, you know, what you're born with is what you got. No mutilation, then. <clears throat> we have some amazing news coming out of the KSAT.com. Army official charged with sex trafficking in SA, Lieutenant Colonel Raymond Vallas arrested following sex trafficking sting bust. Now, this is uh, San Antonio. Court documents said a high ranking army official traveled to San Antonio to have sex with an under underage girl. She was found by investigators days after the incident in a sex trafficking sting. Vallis is a lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Army, is being held in Syracuse, New York, federal jail on one count of sex trafficking of children. Criminal affidavit said the victim, identified as 15-year-old TJ, 
met Marcus Deshaun Wright at a bus stop in August of 2013. She said Wright told her he could show her a way to make a lot of money. On August 23, 2013, she met Wright at a Wingcrest motel. She told investigators Amber Doak and another woman began telling her how much fun she would have and how much money she would be making by escorting. The affidavit said Wright took provocative pictures of TJ and posted them online to advertise her as an escort. Now, who's trafficking children? This is the military of the United States Incorporated and females. Just your average psychopath there trafficking children. Just as exactly what it says in the 2009 uh, human trafficking report by the UN. Uh, the female is the main perpetrator of the child sex trafficking, female sex trafficking, and male slave labor market. Now, the argument today that we had, and you've covered this extensively, but the argument on that thread started out with this false flag female coming on and saying, oh, I don't get, females don't get paid as much as males. Well, talk to Fa Obama about that, because that attorney in chief came out with the uh, State of the Union address this year and said, yep, federal female employees do not get paid as much as males. Well, it's the federal government that determines the minimum wage and what females and males are being paid in their federal positions. And it has nothing to do with males or females as victims. It's the state preying on you. And, um, you know, if, you're, if you want to patronize that thing, keep patronizing that thing. All it does is works toward your demise, according to the 1947 National Security Act. And so many people just don't understand what's going on with the National Security Act. 1947 came in with that thing and um, recreated the military. Uh, read section 302 and 303 would be the main ones to read and um, you can see how they created the CIA out of that. And all of the departments, they allowed for all this expansion through all this uh, departmentalization and oh what else can we say about that here it would be something that people could sink their teeth into because um I mean that that National Security Act allowed for then later through those uh, sections to uh, come out of that the creation of the Office of Population Affairs the enemy of the state was considered the human being. National security refer refers to corporate security for a nation as, of course, foreign state is defined under 28 U.S.C. subsection 1603 of the United States Code. And in this, national security refers to such as corporate welfare. So the human being is going to be used in any manner necessary to provide for national security and Kissinger came in in 1974 and said the same thing depopulation is the highest priority at that time 1974 of all foreign policy well, why is that well there was a lot of overhead a lot of people coming up on on welfare human beings on welfare social security they had created the baby boom they knew what was coming and in there, they had suggested that depopulation occur prior to the date of 2035, which, of course, it says the same thing in the Georgia Guidestones, which was commissioned out of the Franklin Bank. Now, Franklin Bank at that time, of course, was trafficking children. They changed the name to People's Bank. They changed the name to U.S. Bank. They're still the same thing, trafficking children. And, of course, now they're being held accountable for these things. San Antonio there, which was nice to see. Yeah. Next door CEO to plead not guilty to hit and run charges. Over at CNN Money. They're really, really, really uh, targeting the corporations. National security. So the CEOs, we've been seeing a lot of this stuff this week. His attorney for 
Narav Talia says there was nothing unusual about his client leaving the accident scene without stopping. Of course not. Of course not. Yeah, citizens can do that and not have any repercussions, right? Right. And and this attorney is just he's uh you know, this is a new a new realm. A new world for these attorneys and CEOs that are not used to being held accountable for running over human beings and things and doing things that they, prior to this, got away with. So it says, Narev Tolia, the CEO and co-founder of Social Network Next Door, plans to plead not guilty to felony hit-and-run charges at his court appearance on Tuesday. He was charged in San Mateo County less than two weeks ago over an accident that took place in August just south of San Francisco that left a woman injured. Okay, I wish it would quit using that word because that woman was harmed by this thing. The woman, Patrice Motley, also filed a civil lawsuit against Talia in which she described him as driving recklessly. According to the complaint and a police report, Talia switched lanes to overtake a vehicle, cutting Motley off and causing her to spin out of control across three lanes of traffic and crash into the median. The two vehicles never collided with each other, and Talia left the scene without stopping. Talia's lawyer, Daniel L. Barton, a partner of, at Nolan Armstrong and Barton in Palo Alto said there was nothing unusual about Talia's actions. A lot of misinformation is being disassembled by the PI lawyer, Barton said in a telephone interview using the shorthand for personal injury lawyer. The police report indicates that Mr. Talia was driving at a safe and lawful speed and the other vehicle was driving faster. But he was the one overtaking it, right? Right. Makes sense to me, Mr. Attorney. <laughs> Insanity. According to a California Highway Patrol report, both Talia and Motley told police that they were driving at about 55 to 60 miles per hour at the time of the accident on Highway 101. Through, uh, Though Motley said Talia's BMW SUV was driving slightly faster than her Honda Del Sol. My goal is to resolve the case based on what happened in the roadway, not by the information that is being spoon-fed to the media, Barton said. Last week, Talia told Fortune that he didn't believe his actions caused Molly to lose control of her vehicle and that he didn't know she was injured. Now, so the charges related to Talia's position as CEO of Nextdoor, well, the charges are unrelated, they're saying, yet they could create problems for the company as it seeks to entice more cities and police departments to use the neighborhood-based social network to communicate with residents. Here they go again, uh, Fear -mongering. beating us into yeah. their uh, square <laughs> hole as we're round pegs. Uh, if you charge you know. him, you might lose your Facebook. Oh my goodness. If we if we held him accountable for injuring somebody or harming a human being, you might lose your social network. It's insane. Yeah, they just keep... Well, it, you know, my point was that, you know, they keep classifying everybody as residents, keep calling everybody citizens, and, uh, you know, I take objection to, to that. I'm offended when I'm referred to as a citizen or a resident or an individual, you okay. know. They keep operating, though, under this pretense that, you know, we are these things, we're taking up these titles and stuff. I guess that's because, like, nobody hardly divests themselves of all that. Right, or or sticks with the holding them accountable part. They want the human ease. They want a quick fix. Uh, maybe we should, you know, walk into court with brackets. And uh, we'll disappear if we turn around a couple times or something. Uh, from money's 
CNN.com. Ousted Radium One CEO Jirbakash Jirbaksha Chanal Chahal has written an open letter to the board that fired him following an uproar on social media. The ad startup executive was accused of hitting his girlfriend 117 times in a span of less than half an hour last August. The former CEO maintains that the allegations were false and that his board encouraged him to plead to a misdemeanor rather than fight a lengthy trial to exonerate him. Quote, what did I do to deserve this when all I've ever done is put the interests of you and the company ahead of my own? Chahal wrote in the letter first sent to CNN Money. Quote, I thought I could count on your support as a board, as executives, and as a team, you had, and you abandoned me when I needed you most for support. Well, let's go back to Matthew 27. Matthew 27, 45. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them not, that stood there, when they heard that, said, This man calleth for Elias. And straight away one of the men, one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. And the rest said, Let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Now, when you go to the etymology on Elias, is actually known in English as Elijah, but Elias means Lord God. So this refers to any any Jesus on the cross. It depends on who your daddy is. And the reason that we have this show, the public law, leaving the farm and the Bull and Rocco show, is for that purpose. Because if you know who yourself is, if you know thyself, if you are not patronizing the thing that crucifies you and variants on just be living and being at your own authority you are no longer on the cross you're not forsaken by your father you actually find your father and your own house and once you start patronizing that all of these things go away and you are no longer crucified you are no longer Job as you're not taking up all those titles that allow Jesus to be crucified in the first place, which was maintained as casting lots. Divest yourself of all that possesses you, he said. And when you don't do that, you end up as a CEO being rolled on by your Lord God or the board of directors there. And you learn the hard way who you should have patronized in the first place. And he said it best when he said, look, I put the... I put the uh, interests of the corporations ahead of everything. I patronized you. I patronized you, Lord God. I patronized you. Why have you forsaken me? It's interesting to read that one today. Yeah, it sure was. Uh, what about this uh, House Press Secretary resigning? Oh, yeah, they're all jumping ship. Now, what right. normally happens, and what happened in Bolshevik Russia, before you read that, um, during Nazi Germany, they just shipped the administrators over to another area. And th that happened to be, quote, America was the up-and-coming uh, product. So, such as Ernst Rudin made it out alive out of, out of Nazi Germany. He was a very, very well-known eugenicist, very well-known psychiatrist, and he knew how to how to traffic humans just right. So uh, he went from the Nazi German uh, administration right over into the American administration. And I have a feeling that these folks are also being shifted around probably to the UK or to India, which is where the trade agreements are. Yeah. So he quit. It looks like he's jumping ship. Um, yeah, he's trying to. Let's see. It's Jay Carney. Stepping down as White House Press Secretary, President Obama announced on Friday. Obama said uh, Carney told him of his decision in April, and Carney later said he plans to leave the position in mid-June. The President announced that Deputy Press Secretary Josh Ernest will step into the role. 
Uh, Barber considers Carney one of his closest friends. Uh, he's got a good judgment. He's got good judgment. Yeah. He has good temperament, and he's got a good heart. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, because all those people up there are so kind-hearted. Absolutely. Carney previously spent 21 years in journalism, including a stint as Washington Bureau Chief of Time magazine. And Obama noticed and noted that he went from one of those asking the questions to the person behind the podium in the White House briefing room. He was Obama's second press secretary during more than five years of presidency. So he took over in 2011 when Robert Gibbs stepped down and has been Obama's chief spokesman men through budget battles with Congress and 2012 re-election, the Obamacare rollout, the controversy over the Benghazi terror attack, the, yeah, terror attack, the Edward Snowden NSA leaks, and now the scandal engulfing the Veterans Affairs Department, because that was the last straw. Yeah. I mean, and it was, and he's trying to distance himself from this administration, of course. Yeah. And that's what Obama was saying. Oh, he's a good guy. He's got a really big heart. <laughs> don't, don't, don't follow him to see where he goes. Like, uh, who is that? Prime Minister Brown over in the UK. He came right over into the, quote, American administration into the banking sector. And you can follow all of them. They're always just shifted to where they're they're needed most, and um, a lot of these shows are just presentations for the sheeple to say, oh, he he doesn't like these policies. He's stepping down. They'll just transfer him somewhere else. Carney said that. Uh, well, let's see. In midlife, you don't make a whole new set of friends, and not just friends with people you would fight by. And for under any circumstances, and that's certainly what I have been lucky enough to get over these past five and a half years, he said. That's what Carney said. And let's see. He had discussions about what's next for him, but hasn't made any firm decisions. Yeah, probably go hide somewhere if you can, right? Absolutely. That's the whole point. He was former director of communications for Vice President Joe Biden before ascending to the White House job he has now. Carney's married to journalist Claire Shipman, a senior correspondent for ABC News. Well, they're all just, just in it together, aren't they? Yep. As for Carney's successor, Obama called Ernest a straight shooter and a great guy. He said their history dates to the 2008 Iowa caucus where Ernest served as Obama's communication director and... In the Hawkeye State, as you know, his name describes his demeanor. The president also said of Ernest. Mm-hmm. Ernest. He's trying to call him Ernest. He's a good guy. He's really earnest. Yeah. So we were talking about this one um, from the Ivy Times. Shinesky. Don't forget about Shinesky just resigning, too, uh, for that. Veteran scandal. Yeah. So, you know. Is that going to improve things, you know, in the VA hospitals? No, nope. nope. just makes the sheep more comfortable to know that somebody quit or somebody left or somebody did something, but nothing ever happened. They still murdered how many veterans? It's just policy. So we were talking about predation on females earlier. They also use religious indoctrination to prey on human beings all over the globe. And this one we saw to this week come out in India, which is over the top from ivytimes.co.uk. Indian court to rule if Hindu spiritual leader Samadhi is dead or simply meditating. What, what was your take? So, so this spiritual leader, he passed away and law enforcement came out and they declared him dead. And I'll be... Gosh darned if the judge didn't come in and say, hey, wait a minute, we're not sure, 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 for sure, for sure yet if he's dead or not. So this attorney in the black dress came in and wants a piece of that estate. That's a huge estate. Um, An Indian court has been asked to rule whether a Hindu spiritual leader is dead or actually in a deep state of meditation. His Holiness, 
Sri Ashutosh Maharaj, founder of Divya Jayati Jagrati Sanstan, DJJS religious order, died in January, according to his family. However, his followers insist the Guru is still alive and are refusing to hand over his body for cremation. They say their leader, known as Samadhi, who is reported to hold property worth an estimated 100 million pounds or 181 million FRNs, is merely in a deep state of meditation. They are preserving his body in a freezer until he awakes, according to the Daily Telegraph. One of his followers, claimed Maharaj, had previously spent many years meditating in sub-zero temperatures in the Himalayas. Doctors declared the Hindu leader dead from a suspected heart attack on January 28th. Despite this, the religious group's website said that Samdi has been in a very deep meditative state since January 29, 2014. Samadhi's family believe his followers are refusing to release the Guru's body as a means to control his hundred million pound fortune. Punjab police initially confirmed his death in January, but the Punjab High Court later threw out its status report. Local government officials have ruled the situation is a spiritual matter and said the Guru's followers cannot be forced to believe he is dead. How's that for attorney snake and ride in there to get out that estate? Yeah, well, what it was was the his followers wanted to, um, uh, you know, keep their hands in the pot. Right. And uh, here comes the attorney to say, oh, no, no, uh, we got to have our hands in it. Absolutely. Everybody's fighting over that estate like dogs, and the court is right in the center of this thing, racking it in there and making sure that his family's put through absolute hell Thanks to Judas, which are his little followers there that won't release the body. And, of course, the court buying or selling him all of these little rights and benefits. And that family is just being traumatized and terrorized by the whole process. You know, it, it's, it's their family member that died. This is just so horrifying to, to see um, any sect of society, especially... Groups of psychopaths like this one playing the religious indoctrination card. It's about as yeah, bad as yeah, it's quite sad and sickening, and this stuff goes on and on and on because people allow it. You know, the attorneys do this. They they basically want to uh, deprive of us of, uh, of being the heir for one. That's why all the fourth generation warfare, you know, so we can have less and they can have more. It's, uh, it's the same game over and over again. And uh, these things get a lot simpler if you simply quit going to your transgressors to help you. And, uh, that, you know, it takes the form of your local politicians and, of course, the corporate council attorneys working in your area under the guise of city council or, you know, the various different names they have for these creatures. Now, I wanted to cover one I, I haven't gotten to yet this week um, over on this lady that, uh, you know, they want to put her to death for refusing to renounce her Christian faith. Are you familiar with this one? No, oh, go ahead and I'll listen. And, um, sounds like they're doing it so, doesn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, they're going to... It's a law. Yeah, it's your, uh, it's her local governance. Um, but, uh, let's see, a Sudanese, Su Sudanese, okay, Sudanese woman sentenced to death for refusing to renounce her Christian faith is unlikely to change her mind, her husband says. Now, this woman is, uh, well, Miriam Yeha, uh, Ibrahim. It was condemned to die by hanging after she declined to process 
or profess she is a Muslim, the religion of her father. Sharia law considers her a Muslim and does not recognize her marriage to a Christian. Court convicted her of uh, apostasy uh, or the renunciation of faith and adultery two weeks ago. At the time, she was eight months pregnant. She gave birth to a baby girl this week at Quatum Prison, where she's detained with Martin, her 20-month-old son. Now, what, now, what do they have a 20-month-year-old baby in there for? Because attorneys are psychopaths. Exactly. Despite languishing in prison with two infants, she's holding firm to her beliefs, according to her husband, Daniel Wani, an American citizen who is also Christian. There's pressure on her from Muslim religious leaders that she should return to the faith. Wani told CNN and TV exclusive, she said, how can I return when I never was a Muslim? Yes, my father was Muslim, but I was brought up by my mother. Wani said, his wife is practicing uh, Christian more so than him and even had her son baptized. I know my wife, she's committed, he said, even last week they brought in uh, sheiks and told them, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to change my mind. Once he said she, uh, he is thrilled about his new daughter but hopes her birth doesn't hasten his wife's death sentence. In the past cases involving pregnant or nursing women, Sudan waited until the mother had weaned her child before executing a sentence. Sharia law, as practiced in Sudan, prohibits carrying out the death sentence on an expectant woman until two years after she gives birth. CNN has sought comment from the Sudanese government and was directed to the Justice Ministry subsequently. A CNN request for an interview was denied. And CNN was told the Justice Minister does not co comment on matters before the court as a final judgment has not yet been issued in this case. An attempt to contact Sudan's Foreign Affairs Minister for comment was unsuccessful. Right. So instead of doing all that crap, execute all the attorneys. The Sudanese government, gone. Execute them. It's done. Right. It's I over. mean... She's done no harm. I mean, I, you know, I don't uh, like people holding on to, you know, I don't like to see it. People holding on to titles such as Christian or Muslim, you know, citizen, any of that stuff. Catholic. I mean, Jesus said we're to divest ourselves of all these things, his titles. Right? Right. And, um, but, uh, I mean, unfortunately, when you patronize a government, the government says, okay, well, you got to follow my rules then. And that's what we see here. And their rules are death sentence for not believing what they want you to believe. Right. And this is all attorneys. It doesn't have anything to do with God. It doesn't have anything to do with... Religion. This is all how attorneys cash in. Now, where do those children go? What's happening to those children while they're in there being terrorized in a prison setting? How are they going to grow up? It's all capacity building for these attorneys. And these attorneys need to be just swiftly removed from their ability to harm. And, and, and they're going to torture her, too. In addition to the death sentence, the court sentenced her to uh, 100 lashes. 100 lashes for adult, for the adultery conviction. Yeah. And adultery was not even, it's not even adultery. Fornication. Yeah, they're talking so about the perverted form of fornication that attorneys and priests put out. Yeah, and Jesus said it very clearly in 1 Corinthians 6. You can only fornicate by giving your body to the Lord God. Which is that court. And that court needs to be just shut down and all of those officers executed on site immediately. Yeah, well I tell you, I mean, we're reaching an apex here. 
and uh, you know this craziness is just coming to light I hope people see the wizard behind the curtain who's pulling all these levers we pointed out here over and over again it always was the attorneys whether they had bar cards back in the day or not these creatures existed they are bean counters counting human beings throwing them up in the uh, coffers of the exchequer so they can cash in on this what is essentially human trafficking and of course going back to the etymology on the word of turn it means to pay homage to another Lord God an attorney is already fornicating if they want anybody to execute for adultery it's already lawful over in Sudan it says it right there they're, they're charging her for adultery but it is the attorney who's worshiping Marduk and not Allah or God exactly but they've escaped that through their oath to the bar. bar which is an oath to another Lord God they're saying they're a citizen under the bar they're worshiping another Lord God that's what patriotism is yeah so I mean it's quite sad I don't want to see uh, that sort of thing I want to see people held accountable for harm against humanity which we've shown over and over again that that's all the predators called government and attorneys do absolutely it's all it does it just preys on humanity according and an adherence to national security from allafrica.com Tanzania ex-CEO of Tanzania state-run power company charges graft the former chief executive of Tanzania state-run power company was who was sacked two years ago over corruptions allegations has been charged with abuse of office and forgery William Mahondo the former managing director of Tanzania electric supply company or Tanisco along with his wife Eva and three other employees were arraigned on Monday before the court in Dar es Salaam on charges of abuse of office, forgery, and obtaining money by false pretenses. Mohando, in 2012, was implicated in the corruption scandal when a state audit report found that the chief executive allegedly had embezzled public funds by awarding a contract worth more than 884 million Tanzania shillings or U.S. $554,500 FRNs to a private firm he jointly owns with his wife. It's nice to see her being held accountable this time, too, because we didn't see that in um, Madoff. We didn't see that in many of these, you know, Enron scandals, all of these things. And it's really nice to see that the one who motivated him is also going into the same shoot and uh, going back to feminism you want equal play you get to equally pay yeah well I... no more specialized free ride for for feminists that uh, you know put their husband's butts on the line each and every day in exchange for all manner of benefits and uh, now that she's being held accountable it's really nice to see I was you know part of this week's um, awe striking you know, achievements if you will you know in India a female was charged with abetting a male suicide you know and these things uh, you had reported on the GL uh, charged and sentenced to prison she got two years her husband got one year suspended and um, because the children needed a parent at home and it didn't win in her favor this time uh, nope no and and 
And that was a guardian ad litem, which few people know about, because that's one of those wizards behind the curtain that's behind the curtain. Right. That's behind the curtain. I mean, these creatures have been untouchable. They've un, you know, precedented uh, power over hypothecating people's estates, if you will. Absolutely. They have conservators of each county. They're, they're, they're conservative for bankrupt states. And um, they're the big wigs on the corporate council, association of corporate council. <coughs> they are the ones that find the most efficient use of children to trick out in family and probate court processes and juvenile justice systems and you name it, they're right there, wreaking those, you know, racking it in on, on the backs of human children and, and elderly. From Reuters.com, ex-Goldman director Gupta loses bid to stay out of prison. So, uh, he's trying to stay out while he's in appeal. Former Goldman Sachs Group. Incorporated Director Rajat Gupta will begin serving a two-year prison term on June 17th after a U.S. federal appeals court rejected his bid to stay free while he appeals his insider trading conviction. In a brief order on Friday, the Second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in New York rejected a request by Gupta, a former global managing director of consulting firm McKinsey & Company, to delay his surrender and remain free on bail. Gupta, 65, was convicted in June 2012 of feeding tips from the Goldman board meetings to longtime friend Raj Rajar Nam, a founder of the Galen Group hedge fund firm. Evidence included a September 20, 2008 phone call just before Goldman announced a $5 billion investment for, from Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway Incorporated, in which Rajar Nam was heard telling a trader that he learned from a source who prosecutors said was Gupta. That something, quote, something good might have to happen to Goldman, end quote. It also included an October 2008 conversation in which Rajar Nam told a colleague that a Goldman director had tipped him off that the bank would post a quarterly loss. Anyway, it's nice to see him going into the pokey. Yep, get on in there. Make room for the next one. Absolutely. See what they got to do is they got to let these, let all these uh, victimless crime uh, people out. I mean. Uh, yeah, there has to be room for these people. You know, there's just too many people in there. They're in there for long periods of time for you know these commercial crimes that have not harmed anyone. Okay, the state claims it's arming them, but uh, that's just uh, more of their commercial crimes nonsense, attorney work product doctrine. Uh, there's, heck, there's one, uh, let's see if I can find that story. There's a kid facing uh, life in prison for uh, pot brownies. Oh, that was terrible. I saw that one this last week, too. We'll have to put it out. Maybe do a video later. I mean, we see where, uh, you know, this is going here. I mean, with the police state, uh, California High School put on four-hour lockdown. Police conducted weapon search. Over to Investment Watch. Which is traumatizing. Com. Uh, the, uh... And there's a uh, the police department in. Let's see here if I can get the other one up here. Well, come back to that one. But that toddler getting a grenade, you know, flash grenade, or I guess it wasn't a flash grenade; it was a smoke grenade. But. Uh, you know, blew up right in that toddler's face. His toddler is in a induced coma because of the severity of the burns at a burn center. This happened in Atlanta, Georgia. 
Uh, of course, you may have heard the report at the uh, front of the show that you ran for my YouTube report on it. Yeah. And I'm I not very happy that. with these policies that these corporate thugs are, you know, enforcing. And they're going to be the fall guy on this. The, the attorneys aren't going to go down for this stuff. Oh. The guy that threw the grenade is going to go down. Well, I've been watching the comments from the sheeple and, um, and of course, a lot of agents. And you look at these things, and, and at first, the sheeple are in agreement with these things. Well, okay, so they went in there into this home on a no-knock warrant under 27 CFR 72.11 for what appears to the sheeple as potential harm caused by drug dealing, drug trafficking, and I guess there were some arms in there. Now, these people never harmed anybody, but it could be a threat, okay? Cops threw... And it was a sting operation, too. Right. You know, agents came and uh, set them up. Okay, right. Well, there's still no harm. To all the sheeple out there, to all the informants out there listening... There was never any harm. No, the harm is against the revenue, just like it says in 27 CFR 72.11, because uh, they're uh, butting in on the federal state's drug uh, racketing scheme. Right. Racketeering or whatever, you know. I mean, obviously, by this time, most everybody knows that the biggest revenues that come out of Afghanistan is from the poppies. Right. The soldiers, the United States Incorporated soldiers, are there guarding the poppies. Right. So, those so the, it's, the, this, the federal state is not against drugs. They're against, uh, you know... Human beings undercutting C them. Yeah, undercutting Caesar. Right. So, to all of the sheeple, listen very carefully here, because I, I have to hold you accountable for informing and delivering up your neighbors. Now, you perceive this as potential harm or a potential threat to your community. Attorneys directed law enforcement, and law enforcement threw a smoke grenade into a child's crib and burned him to the extent that he is in critical condition in an induced coma, which is harm upon a child. He's 18 months old. He's a baby. Now, weigh that one out in your mind. Even if you're not living in a relative state and you're doped up, in one hand, there's a potential threat upon humanity, and in the other hand, the attorney maintained a harm upon humanity. Now, no more of this. If, if you tolerate this and if you inform on your neighbors, I will hold you accountable. You cannot be this stupid to keep continuing to patronize this thing. Yeah, in this case, it wasn't a uh, neighborhood informant. It was uh, the police conducting a sting operation. Right, but in many FBI. cases, the informants play a big role. And, of course, the FBI agents, they're, they're poked along by the attorneys, these principals, which is corporate counsel. From BostonHerald.com, guidance counselor accused of having sex with girl. Attleboro, Massachusetts, a middle school guidance counselor in Massachusetts has been charged with having sex with a 14-year-old student and ordered held on $30,000 FR and bond. Brian McBride of Attleboro pleaded not guilty to stated charges including statutory rape, an attorney work product during an arraignment in which the girl's father was removed from the courtroom after an outburst. Why remove him? If somebody's preying on your kids, we don't need a judge. We'll take care of it. Enough is enough. It's over now for attorneys. You're not going to cash in on harm upon children, period. Now to all communities out there, take care of your own stuff. When you allow a judge and a prosecuting attorney to charge for child predation, you're allowing them to get money for the use of the child's body. That is called prostitution. And they have it all shiny and call it court process. 
Let the girl's father at that guy. Let him take him out and remove him. No more of this restraining order stuff. No more prosecuting attorney cashing in. Prosecutors allege the 31-year-old McBride, who is married and has a toddler, had sex with a girl at school in his car and at his home over several months last year. McBride allegedly told police his marriage was in trouble and he loved the girl. He was the girl's chorus teacher and gave her private singing lessons before becoming a guidance counselor at North Attleboro Middle School. Yeah, they promoted him because he was good at child predation. The girl's parents went to police last weekend. McBride's lawyer said his client was, quote, well-respected in the community up until these allegations. Absolutely. They chum up with the parents. They're in the positions at the school so they can prey on the children because you're taught that you can't do nothing. They restrain that dad from taking him out in court. And these people, just as attorneys, are... Silver tongue devils. That's it. Protect your own kids. Stop this nonsense. Now, over in Seattle, it's 120 cops filing a lawsuit because they want. Well, let me just read it here. Uh, Seattle's new policy changes to restrict the use of excessive force have cops in an uproar. And they are doing everything they can to reverse those charges to lift the veil off the limits while excessive group uh, force, uh, while exercising brute force. On Wednesday, 120 officers are plaintiffs in a new lawsuit. So why did the policy change occur this year? By 2012, the Seattle Police Department had been under heavy federal watch after numerous incidents of using excessive force mainly on minorities. Uh, Routers reports. Years of excessive police force were so significant that Seattle worked out a new policy with the U.S. Department of Justice. The lawsuit seeks to dismantle all of it. The reason why and, and what the officers want are very telling. According to the lawsuit, the officers find that the new policy will unreasonably restrict the burden, restrict and burden plaintiff's rights to use force reasonably required to protect themselves and others from apparent harm and danger. But the reason for any kind of restriction in the first place was bred out of unreasonably endangering the lives of citizens. They want compensation and complete policy overhaul. And get this, they call the policy unconstitutional and beyond repair, it says. Well, now, if you understand what we teach, no. The Commerce Clause allows them to do these things. And then the letter of marquee and reprisal, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 11, basically says they're, they're pirates that, uh, you know, under the federal state are made privateers as long as they give uh, cut back to Caesar, the federal state. But now, why are these cops being put in harm's way in the first place? Yeah. And that reason is because they're enforcing all this commercial crime BS nonsense. Right, and you have to go into that law. Now, I was researching this this last week as well. And um, what the attorneys have done is they say that if the police or law enforcement encounter somebody armed, they can't use excessive force. Okay. So now they're telling them to stand down in the face of actual danger in order to kill off law enforcement. The same thing they were doing with the um, citizens in the beginning. Why are they using excessive force? Well, hold on. When a cop is going out to a call, and all of our law enforcement that are listening to this show right now, when you're going out to a call and you're told that somebody's armed and dangerous, you have an itchy trigger finger because you're put into self-defense. That force is prompted, excessive force is prompted and promoted by corporate counsel, by dispatch, by the psychiatrist sitting right there, prompting you and promoting this type of behavior. This is promotion of civil war. They want you dead. They want the citizen dead. They don't care who kills each other as long as somebody gets injured and there's court process along with that. Exactly. Again, attorneys cashing in on the demise of humanity. Absolutely. And it makes me so sick. So sick. 
Uh, along with the city of Seattle, targets of the lawsuit also include U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder and Mayor Ed Murray. In keeping with the court order, presumably meant for confidentiality, Murray didn't say much about the suit, but did say the Justice Department and the federal courts say we need to deal with issues of use of force as well as other issues in our police department. Right, and of course this one was thrown out. The attorneys threw it out earlier this week. I'm trying to find that um, because of the dynamics. And of course the attorney's going to say, you know, no, no, you can't go forward. They're going to pit law enforcement and citizen against itself and each other. And who's cashing in? These very same attorneys. So that these, these law enforcements are not going to get any relief. Um, nobody's going to get any relief but the attorneys. These attorneys are cashing in on every aspect of humanity. Every aspect of humanity. Yeah, and and just to remind everyone of things spoken about in the past, under the Geneva Convention of 1929, police officers and citizens were held as prisoners of war at holding corporation just as well as the uh, citizens. I mean equally. They were right. both held. Now we changed things up last year with the agreed entry and out of my court case. That's why they're scrambling around right now to pit the citizens and, and law enforcement against each other. As quickly and as much as possible. Right. So you know wish there was a way to reach all of law enforcement and all the citizens as to what's going on but uh, you know we're doing the best we can here and reaching as many people as we, we can on our our uh, you know outlets that we have here on the internet and it's up to you to spread this information around. Okay, you can send people to the website, chooseyourside.org, go to the authorized document sections or read the court case. Okay, and the research material behind it is also provided in the document section. But yeah, to AP, Seattle U.S. Attorney, no merit to officer's lawsuit. So yeah, I guess. Right, what you're saying, U.S. Attorney Jenny Durkin on Thursday dismissed as without merit a civil rights lawsuit filed by more than 100 Seattle police officers saying that the new use of force policies are restricting their, their constitutional right to protect themselves. Well, it actually is. The attorneys are playing a really good game here, and again, the attorneys are cashing in both ways. Killing law enforcement, killing citizens, they don't care. As long as somebody kills one or the other, the attorneys always cash in. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, sad. The cops want to uh, uh, have more uh, control over what amount of force they can use. But, because I mean, the policies, are, the policies they're enforcing are all commercial crimes. So, they're, you know, very seldom do they involve the harm upon a human being except for when the cops come in enforcing their commercial crimes and push the issue. Right. And then the, the same attorneys take away the right to bear arms and then they sell it back to the citizen and then they sell it to the citizen that they're in danger then they sell them more guns then they take away the right to bear arms and it always goes back and forth. Everybody's suing each other. Everybody's inside court. Everybody's allowing the attorneys to cash in on all of these things while they're not looking at the attorneys killing everybody equally. That's exactly right. But uh, that's why we're, why we're here and hopefully, like I said, reaching as many as possible in the time we have left. Uh, there'll be a time where um, we're not going to be talking about all these things anymore it's all going to be done so uh let's see here we've got uh over at the uh 
Let's just say to Robe Server. Anyways, uh, let's see, this is from today. Uh, Devereaux Counselor charged with endangerment. This is Gavin Grant, 26, of uh, Poughkeepsie. Was arrested May 12th in Red Hook and charged with endangering the welfare of a child, a misdemeanor according to a state police report. Grant, a residential counselor at the DeRoyal Foundation in Red Hook, allegedly threw a 14-year-old resident on the floor and spit at him. Uh, he was released on tickets to appear in court. Tickets for throwing around children. Yeah, Time again, attorneys them. renting out our bodies. Yeah, and these attorneys need to be just executed. They're, enough is enough. You know, we gave them time to back out. We gave them time to repent. There's there's nothing left now. You know, the, the, we don't have a necessity of cockroaches all over the place, especially if they're such a threat to humankind. Now, let's see, over at... Uh... R-I-N-F, I've got a story up here on 227 million Americans could be held on federal database. So two independent federal agencies are coming under attack after calling for the creation of a nationwide database that would collect the social security numbers and other personal identifiable information of as many as 227 million Americans. Now... Well, let me go on. That's what the Federal Housing Finance Agency and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau asked for, at least, with an April 16 Federal Register note of expansion that failed to garner attention of the media until Friday this week. That morning, Richard Pollack at the Washington Examiner wrote that the creation of a new national, national database, as outlined in last month's memo, would contradict previously stated policy and put the personal details pertaining to hundreds of millions of Americans in one shared database. Stop uh, being an American. Hmm? Stop well, being yeah. an American. Stop registering. Stop applying for benefits. Stop giving them your information and it won't be in a database. Well, I think this is in response to You know, and this is 227 out of what they say the population is, is 330 million. So I wonder what that other 100 million is being left out for. But now, you know, with the agreed entry, we broke all that presumption and took all the human beings out of the holding corporation. Right. Now, what they need to do is they need to assign you back over there. Right. They need your consent. Patriotism. They need you to register, apply, contract, whatever, so that you're aligning with them via patriotism. Registering says that's your daddy. FHFA will manage the database and share it with CFPB, uh, an internal planning document for 2013 through 2017 describes the Bureau as monitoring 95% of all mortgage transactions. Right. So stop signing dead pledges. They need your consent. The bank doesn't own those properties until you tell it that that bank owns the property by taking out a mortgage. Stop doing that. It's almost over. They're hurting for business. According to the notice of expansion posted last month, the database would satisfy requirements of the Housing and Economic Recovery Act of 2008. As well, it uh, will help uh, prepare uh, an annual report given to Congress in doing as much. However, the agencies want their hands on more than just a few minuscule details. Right. So, and, you know... The thing is, if you consent uh, to be a citizen and, you know, you remain in the system, they're going to do what they want to you. You're their property. Right. And 
Now this is why this is tied right in with the mortgage stuff because the mortgage is a dead pledge. Gone over here. Ties right into Article 12, the Articles of Confederation. Yep. You're right. pledging yourself as a pledged asset. So, you know, it's sick what they do, and, it, and it's it's all written. It's all here to to read. Uh, the records the agency want to plug into the new database include loan level data in five dimensions, mortgages, logs, real estate transactions, household demographic data on the borrower, physical characteristics pertaining to the house and neighborhood, and a full credit report. Agencies acknowledge it in the fine print, though the FHFA and CFPB say they want to collect more than just a few tidbits. Yeah, they want everything on you. You know, uh, it's like uh, Hitler wanted everything. Documentation, please. Papers, please. And as, as a sovereign state, we can hold them accountable for espionage due to their own, what is that? Uh, 18 U.S.C. subsection 794. Yes, thank you. Um, but uh, it points out that, uh, you know, this is espionage because it's national security as opposed to state, state security, security. Which is further evidenced by the National Security Act. 1947 right you know it, it's everything's written you guys are the reason this is going slow because you want to patronize it but it's all written it's not hard you don't have to uh, search around or investigate their criminal activity it's right in their acts it's in the acts of Congress itself now Politics, which comes from the word polycratus, says to you know means to control many. Okay, and people want to say, well, you know, I have to have a driver's license and register and all that because if I don't, um, you know, I've got these uh, corporate uh, policy enforcement agents out there with guns. Working on behalf of a bankrupt corporation. They said they went bankrupt in 1933. Right, so it's not even a government to begin with. No, it's a, it's bankruptcy fraud. It's bank fraud every time there's a QCIP number generated. It's bankruptcy fraud every time you're charged for something. But the thing is, is that everybody has free will. And... Okay, coercion or not, okay, in order to hold them accountable, you got to pull out. You got to come in as a sovereign state. Or a citizen, a resident of one of the sovereign states. If you, if you know us, you know yourself, but you do have to obliterate that contract. That's what the F and E docs do. It says, look, I'm no longer your property. At least do that. So, you know, record your fee schedule. Reform, do your ordinance of the estates. At least do that. You can elect me as your governor. I'll take over from there. As long as you're walking as a sovereign state, I can take over from there and help you. But you have to say, no, I'm not your property first. That's right. Because the presumption is that you are just consenting by not con dissenting. That's in your, your beloved Constitution, Bouvier's Maximus of Law, as adapted to the United States Constitution. Consent is presumed by law unless express dissent is made known. That's all it takes. And yes, it is a hostile takeover. Of your own body. Yeah, of your own body. But they took it over hostily to begin with. Right, through secession. Nobody was appearing to be alive. Nobody's living here. If you're claiming to be a bunch of fictions, you're lost. 
They have no idea where the owner of that vessel is. So you keep saying, I like my military. I, I like the United States government. It's a bankrupt corporation. It's not a real thing. You're patronizing a fiction. And then you wonder why they're administering your estates and treating you like an infant. You're an infant because you have an imaginary friend you're patronizing and calling you daddy. Yeah, in the meantime, you, you have them uh, raising inflation Absolutely. far beyond what uh, the, even their reports show because uh, they don't report uh, a couple of the most significant things. Like food is on the rise. Absolutely. And they don't throw that into the report for no. the sheep. No. And and they when they do this, it's a test. When you go into fear, the expected result is that you patronize it and go right after that thing they just prayed on you and ask it to help you. Like a Pavlov dog. Yes, it is. It's Pavlovian theory. Pavlo Pavlov's work was very much part of their thinking process and all this. Absolutely. Aldous Huxley. You need to listen to those audios and I'll get that up after the show tonight. And um you know everybody needs to stop and think about what you're doing here folks. Cause everything's done but if you're patronizing that thing you're up for grabs. It owes the United States of being a lot of money, a lot of lawful money. And the way it's going to get it is to take each other out. And if you're patronizing it, you're one of its children. And I'll take you out. These are just grim facts. Uh, Bilderberg plan for Syria, order out of chaos. Well, that's just Congress. That's... It's modus operandi. Bilderberg is a think tank for Congress. Yeah, it looks like it comes from all these different nations. We know all these nations are tied at the hip to the Atlantic Charter and the global banking schematic of banking human beings. Right. League of Nations Covenant, the United Nations Charter. They just keep coming together, folks. The 1648 was, it was uh, Treaty of Westphalia. Yeah. 1648, Rome was reformed. Officially, you've always still been there anyways, um, in their, you know, language, you can see it in the uh, charters of the 1600s, uh, you know, talking about those that were on the mutual voyage, the mutual venture, right. they called it by different things, and then, yeah, right. finally the League of Nations, and... Yeah. And this all seceded the states. It took them over. It didn't secede from anywhere. Secession means to take over an estate. Everybody wants to say, well, you, the UN's the new world order. Now, think about this, though. UN was created through congressional action. Yes. After the National Security Act. And the Atlantic Charter, when Congress got global governance, they're just business partners under Congress. So the Bilderberg Meetings website, established after Info Wars, oh. and the alternative media began exposing the secret globalist confab, lists the Middle East as one of the key topics to be discussed in this year's Copenhagen Denmark meeting. And um, are just, these are just think tanks for Congress. And yes, and then and, and right on Wikipedia it says that uh, one of its uh, first goals was to promote Atlanticism. Right. Okay? That, that's not talking about the ocean. That's talking about the charter. Right. And it's always the same. And Alex Jones is just another agent selling you fear porn and everything else he's pitching to you. From the ChicagoTribune.com, Downers Grove doctor charged with child porn. Here's another one to go with that uh, uh, Representative Farnham there. 
a Downers Grove physician has been charged with possessing and disseminating child pornography, DuPage County authorities said Friday. Edward J. McManaman, 67, appeared in bond court Friday morning, and Judge Elizabeth Sexton set bail at $500,000 at far ends, prosecutors said. McManaman was taken into custody Thursday evening as, at his residence in Downers Grove shortly after authorities issued an arrest warrant, prosecutors said. Downers Grove Police Lieutenant Mike Willison said none of the charges against McManaman were related to his medical practice. A spokesman for our Advocate Healthcare released a statement Friday that said McManaman joined Advocate Medical Group in early 2014, but has been suspended based on the information currently available. Uh, they go on to pitch their health care. Um, Down Air's Grove Police began an, an investigation into McManaman, McManaman earlier this year after receiving a tip from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. The investigation, which later included the DuPage County State's Attorney's Office and the Department of Homeland Security, led to McMenamin, who authorities say had numerous images and videos of child pornography in his possession. He was charged with five counts of disseminating child pornography and 12 counts of possession. Let's go get another one off of the streets. $500,000 bond, that's a good one. No, that's double $250,000. Right. He makes a lot of money. Position. Uh, let's see. Uh, over to Investment Watch. Again, um, it's in, and they always do these in video formats here, but uh, you can kind of get the gist of it from the text that is there. James Rickards, inflation is coming as it is the only way the U.S. can pay its debt. The biggest energy deal in history could be the catalyst that leads to the greenback losing its place as the world's reserve currency. That's the opinion of a range of economists, uh, economists uh, commenting on Russia and China's $400 billion natural gas agreement. James G. Richards, Senior Managing Director at the Tangent Capital, joins RT to discuss the issues, what it says. Right, and that's the new child. The attorney, all of these other folks that are the new surety, um, that is the new capital investment. That's the new capital as you're watching come down the pipe now. Uh, doctors, priests, attorneys, legislators, senators, uh, whoever else is being charged, those are charges to discharge congressional bankruptcy. No. Oh. What should be addressed here is the whole premise of these psychopaths taking your things out of the ground, like natural gas, and selling it back to you after they stole it from you to begin with. Because they deemed you to be a uh, citizen, plebeian, uh, a beneficiary, not the heir. See, unless expressed dissent is made known, consent is presumed. Right. And then that's another facet of uh, beneficium abstinendi. It's your right to abstain, your right to be the heir. How do you evidence that you're abstaining your right to be the heir? You expressly act not as the heir according to their presumptive theory. So if you're saying you're a citizen and a beneficiary, you're not the heir. You live in another house, the House of Representatives. That's your daddy. That's the house you live in. And, and again, it makes no difference what country you are from or alleged country because that's another fiction created by the attorneys in your mind. Uh, to believe, you know, these things and rally up to be patriotic to whatever alleged country they tell you you're living in. But uh, under the Atlantic Charter, again, they're all tied to the hip. They're all tied uh, together in this mutual voyage of theirs, which, by the way, when they say we the people or 
uh, you know, the people, as it says in the Atlantic Charter, they're talking about them, Congress. They're not talking about you. Okay? They're your representatives. All right? So what they're doing is they're facilitating as much banking activity as possible. And by that, I mean using human beings and special deposits to offset their congressional bankruptcy globally. Because you patronize it. It can only do that if you're patronizing it as your daddy. Now, for Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition of 2004, beneficent absent endi, beneficent absent endi is Latin for the privilege of abstaining. It comes from the Roman law, the right of an heir to refuse an inheritance and thus avoid liability for the testator's debts. Quote, these heirs came also to be protected by the praetor, used by the Jews or beneficium abstinendi, provided they took care not to act as heir in any way, in any kind of way. Then, whether they formally demanded the privilege or not, their own property could not be made liable for their ancestors' debts. What kind of debts do your ancestors have? Nothing. Congress is the one that's got the debt. Stop abstaining as the heir. You're the heir. You were seceded in whole, in totality, across the globe, everybody. You were seceded by Congress. Your transgressor came in and took over your state because you're not there. You're saying, no. Oh. I don't live in that body. I'm not a state of being. I'm a citizen resident of the House of Representatives. I live there. Look, it gives me stuff. Welfare benefits, Social Security, veterans pay. Gotta get my retirement. I need medical. How am I gonna survive if I'm the heir? Well, first of all, you won't be killed by your, by your daddy. Stop eating the foods that it tells you to eat in your little feed bag there, handed down to you by the FDA. The same FDA who has contracts with the Ethics Commission, the uh, Friedberg's International Commission of Ethics, or Fiji. Fiji, to kill the feet. The FDA is contracted with the Ethics Commission to use you as a human test subject. Oh, how can they do that? You live in its house. You call it daddy. You buy licenses to marry each other. You buy licenses to have sex with your wives. You're renting her from the state. Another way they garner your consent, uh, they take away the jobs and then the, the beneficiaries out there say, we need more jobs, we need more jobs. One in six American men between ages 25 and 54 are not working. Uh, unemployment rising in Germany and France, figures show. And, um, you know, who do you turn to to fix this? Okay, when you, you don't seem to realize that, you know, the whole idea of you having to have a job in the first place is all another concept created to, you know, to throw you in the chute by the attorneys. Okay, all right, you, you're the, you, before them, you were the heirs of this planet. Go back to the Garden of Eden. You were God before you took up all the concepts that told you you weren't. That's what the Bible says. Now, you know, you're saying by your consent that, uh, okay, uh, daddy government, I know you own all these things. I just want to have a place to live, so how much do I got to pay you? That's Malthusian theory. 
the nature of rent. Right. Again, you see it in uh, the uh, master lend lease agreement with Churchill and FDR. Right. Right after the Atlantic Charter, 42. They told you that you're uh, all renters on your own property now. Because you patronized it and said it was theirs. You said, okay, that's a good deal, yeah. No, it's not a good deal. As long as I don't have to take care of myself. Can I still buy chicken nuggets? I, I don't want to live without my soy milk. I, I have no idea how to milk a soy. I, I wouldn't know where to start. Yeah, I need all my food and packaging. I don't want to hunt or anything. That's just gross. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so all this division and the conflicts that they create, it's all, it's all in their schematic to sell you back into uh, the idea that you need them to protect you. When they're the ones that are preying on you. The book four of the uh, detailed staff reports, the church committee, which uh, Tammy has read pretty much in its entirety, all out in a couple of YouTube videos, and it's very dry and long-winded and stuff, but it tells you, you know, what their modus operandi is, and they go and they create the intelligence. Oh, we need a war started here? Okay, well, you know, you know, we, the CIA, will go in and, uh, you know, we'll rabble-rouse this group of people. Uh, another creation of um, the National Security Act, Al-Qaeda. Meaning the base. They'll was... rabble-rouse the other side. Yeah. And now all of a sudden you have these people shooting at each other that wouldn't be. Right. To... IRA. All of them. And in the Church Committee Report, Book 4, Supplementary Detailed Staff Reports on Foreign Military Intelligence, it says The Cold War. That's a title. The Cold War is an intelligence product of the CIA. And the CIA, of course, is governed by Congress. Vietnam is an intelligence product of the CIA. That was a presentation. That's their product. That's their intellectual property. A creation of the CIA was Vietnam, Japan, Korea, Pearl Harbor, Bundy Ranch. These things promote civil war and pit you guys against each other so that you're pa not only patronizing, but you're paying them to protect you from what they created and in that you're allowing genocide against your own race which is the human race part of the attorney products the corporation's products coming out of the lexicon is the word gender female and male those are products of a corporation that's not what you are. I already know how, what I need to do as a human being to bring my race forward. It's instinctual for me to mate with a male partner. I don't need anybody telling me that he has a penis and nobody needs to tell him that I have a vagina. It works just quite well without their attorney involvement. I don't need anybody telling me I'm black or white or yellow or red. Those are all products of this same corporation. Babylonian theory is a product of this corporation. Here in a somewhat related story on the CIA, Cisco, okay, uh, man, I, I don't even know where to start with Cisco, but they're just intelligence gathering, information gathering, right. monstrosity. Right. Anyways. Massive. Cisco purchased a CIA funded company to fuel 
distrust abroad. Right. CIA's nonprofit venture capital arm in QTEL has been pumping millions of dollars into technology startups since its launch in 2000, meaning it's not the least bit unusual for major vendors to have acquired and assimilated one of these CIA nurtured seedlings. So what could make Cisco's recent acquisition of NQTEL backed security company Threat Grid any more noteworthy than all the others? You've probably seen the pictures of the NSA employees apparently intercepting and bugging Cisco equipment and read the letter sent by Cisco CEO John Chambers to President Obama suggesting the obvious oh, that's that sad. this kind of thing is bad for business. This is sad because Cisco now is being raised. Now, the United States Incorporated was sued last year. Uh, they were found guilty of genocide, human trafficking, low intensity conflict using the use of media and the CIA. Okay, so <clears throat> come forward now. Since they were found guilty, they've taken out the Navy um, operations directors. I think there's been like four or five of those. And various other operations and operations directors that are right under the CIA. The National Security Agency is way under the CIA. It's part of the CIA. It's part of that group. And so Cisco, a private corporation, which is the government, but unknowing, is being raised at this time because they just bought a bunk corporation. If you go back to October, the uh, Naval Operations Director was grooming, that was nailed back then, was grooming a defense corporation in Japan. He got nailed for doing his job and they took him right out. They shut down his department. Uh, they're shutting down all of these things and just now they chose to... Um, that's that story that the, the movie with uh, uh, Jim Carrey where he gets promoted to the president of the company or the president of the um, media of the company. And then they liar, the, liar. Yeah, no, the other one that I was watching the other day, um, oh, goodness, I can't remember, but they promoted him, put him on the media. He started, Dick and Jane? Yeah, fun with Dick and Jane. And um, so that's what they used him for. He was just a use. So they promoted him, and within just hours, you know, after his big promotion, they start – take it out the company, the CEO takes off, they run off, and and um, it's quite a profound um, presentation, but this Cisco thing, they're, they're just raising Cisco. It's quite interesting to hear that one. I hadn't read, read that yet. Well, one sad thing that I see coming out of this uh, Syrian conflict, it, of course, again, was stirred up by your friendly people at United States Incorporated, uh, historic Syrian election brings multitudes of voters. So here we go once again. Uh, yeah, we've got all these problems, so uh, are we going to fix it? Go, go, go vote for the problem starters. Right, and, and this is terrible because of what has just occurred. Now, the CIA was on the ground promoting a civil war was occurring, and all of these people have been traumatized through shock, the use of shock doctrine, and now they're electing officials. They're like, protect me, protect me. But... Every listener out there, every citizen out there, please see this for what it is. Syria was just fine before the attorneys got there. Then the attorneys got there, they put on a big show that there's a civil war going on, they kill a whole bunch of citizens, and then what happens to the citizens? They all look up on that hill and see Moses coming down off of the hill, and Moses says to them, you all are killing each other and stealing each other's wives and asses. Have I got a deal for you? And this is what those poor citizens are doing right now. They have been terrorized and traumatized to this point in order for them to reach out to something to protect them. They don't realize that that is a predator. And to all of our listeners across the globe, if you do not stand up and protect your fellow human being, this happens to you over and over again, and you will be chewed up and spit out. There is no mercy here. I'm telling you, we found them guilty of genocide. They were found guilty of human trafficking. 
They're so far in debt to the United States of being that they'll never pay off that balance. And part of that collection process is taking its product and those who patronize that thing. And it's written in the genocide order. Now, Syrians will be the first to be protected over the Americans that are stupid and patronizing its, its government, knowing what it is. You have to wake up now. You have to choose your side. Well, let's see, uh, what about that uh, insanity that still continues on Flight 370? Ohio. Can't find a plane. No, it's over there. No, we're not looking in the right place. It's over there. No, it's over here. No, it's over there. Yeah, if you if you keep looking for that plane, you will never, ever see the amount of subjugation that females are facing in Malaysia right now through the oppressive government. But now a, a U.S. Navy official now admits there's a Flight 370 cover-up. And... Um, how many children oh. were trafficked in between there when everybody was busy watching out for that plane? Yeah. Yeah. Of course there's a cover-up. I mean, you know, they can find a dime on the road from a space satellite. Well, heck, they could do that back in the 70s, I think. So who knows what they could do now. But uh, that big old Malaysian Flight 370, just they don't know what happened to it. Yeah. Keep everybody busy so they can prey on the kids. That's what it's all about. Yep, what a diversion that has been. And it's, you know, I mean, the first couple, three weeks, CNN was running like five stories a day on it. Right. And they're still running stories every day on it. Um, let's see. All private prison contracts provided for guaranteed population. Want to go in that? That's not a bad thing anymore. You know what? I We had to come to this point in time. We had to facilitate our own court. That means that we have our own bank. That means that the new surety is the one under charges. And I can contract who, with whoever I want to in order to facilitate what I need to have done. Period. Now, any private prisons want to cut us a deal? Because right now it's 10% for um, all assets and revenue and uh, 6,000 ounces of gold a month for the administration of law enforcement. Uh, there's also a 250,000 FRN bounty on attorneys. That doesn't mean we want them dead. That does mean that it's just a bonus for you if you arrest an attorney and house an attorney. And, um, you know, you can come at us and, and we'll look at any other offers as well because our prisons are filling up really swiftly here. We don't have enough room for all these attorneys. There's two million of them in the United States Incorporated alone. We've also got psychopathic doctors, psychopathic psychiatrists, and, uh, other folks to deal with, so we need lots of space. So come at us. We'll uh, entertain ideas. Uh, you can contact me by email. Make sure you put who you are in the subject line, tamiki23 at hotmail.com. And you can also contact me on Skype, T. Pepperman. And uh, we'll uh, talk about what we ha need to have done here because we're uh, running out of room according to. Uh, recent changes yeah yeah so again what we need to do uh, first is get those people that are in there for crimes that are commercial and have not been the result of a uh, human being being harmed Right, and that takes a little while because each one of those that are in there for commercial crimes, it generates more charges against the United States Incorporated because they're holding human beings, having never harmed a human being, and that's where I'm busy. So, we do need extra space, and I prefer Gitmo 
uh, if anybody else has any other ideas. I don't care how run down it is. I don't have any agreements under the rules of war to uh, keep them warm or keep them with sunlight. So if you've got a basement and you've got some bars and I'll take it and we'll, we'll work something out. I don't care what happens to them. They killed uh, 1,500 Syrian babies last year with gas when they wanted to promote a civil war there and make it look like they were doing it on the ground. And uh, I think that was the, the final straw on, on uh, the, the use of the attorney and the use of, of the agent. And um, there's no holds barred anymore. Uh, let's see, it looks like um, in Hungary, uh, they've ordered the Rothschild banks to vacate the country. Uh, let's see, uh, not since the 1930s in Germany has a major European country dared to escape from the clutches of the Rothschild-controlled international banking cartels, which is a law firm. Oh, where's that located? What site is that one on? Uh, this is, uh, politicalcraft.org. Yeah, political, political V, L, uh, Velcraft. I don't know. Uh, I'm just looking at it. Well, you, everybody needs to realize what courts are. They are banks. What hospitals are. They are banks. They're places to stack people. And uh, we need to do more than, than uh, getting rid of Rothschild's banks. Which the, those banks, the presentation of U.S. Bank, the presentation of People's Bank, Franklin Bank, all of those things hold FRNs, Federal Reserve Notes, which are debt notes. The actual courts are the ones that are trafficking and, and uh, uh, dealing with lawful money. A uh, judge's order is a money order. It orders lawful money in exchange for Federal Reserve notes, but only if you have a citizen there asking for its benefits and special rights. Well, see, so much for that. Let's see, Obama administration desperate to censor assassination memo. Um, let's see, Directive number 3025.18 authorizes military force against U.S. citizens on American soil during times of unrest. Well, of course it does. I mean, they declared the U.S. citizen the enemy of the state, as we were talking about earlier, and that was under the Amendatory Act, that was in the which, which, which amended the um, Trading with the Enemies Act that specifically dealt with the German people at the time, but then they just did the Amendatory Act and uh, and just threw the uh, Americans in there. Right, and it's always been, everybody's up for grabs under the 1947 National Security Act. So all of that has to go out of your mind. They're already executing you. It's just really quiet in the hospital setting. Um, you know, Bo was exposed to that personally, not just once or twice. He was also on the ground when Joseph Reynolds was being executed. It wasn't just his mother that he witnessed. And you can go back into the audios from um, uh, Mom was murdered on uh, November 8th last year. You can go to the Leaving the Farm, which would have been the, um, the 9th, November 9th of 2013. You can find that at Rev's uh, YouTube channel at the time with Switch since then, as well as the very next week and, and even prior to that. And all of the audios as we walk everybody through what was going on with her and we walk everybody through what was going on with Joseph Reynolds and how they facilitated his murder and execution all of these things are written they're all in our audios step by step what occurs upon humankind on a day-to-day -day basis simply by consent Everybody's making a big deal about this uh, so-called bombshell that the Federal Reserve pays no taxes. Well, it's been in Title 12 under the Emergency Banking Act um, for uh, forever. So what's the big surprise? It was written back in 1913. Right. Um, 
Um, I guess it's because uh, people just started reading about these things for some reason. For some reason, all of a sudden, it's cool to read about the Federal Reserve, I guess, huh? Truth is catching on, maybe, rather that, than consensus reality. And that's right out of 12 U.S.C. 531, uh, subsection C. They don't pay any taxes. Uh, so... Yeah, the same 12 U.S.C. subsection 73 says the attorneys don't. They're pledged that they're not hypothecated. But that their subjects are. That's in the banking statutes. Is the attorney oh? It doesn't represent you. It represents you into a negotiable instrument. And the court process is called negotiorum gestio. The attorney under Black's Law Dictionary it's called the negotiorum gestor. It's still the same gestor dancing around and around, putting on a show. But the, at inception is when the cognitive judgment is maintained against you. How about this story? A public school uh, cop shoots at fleeing kids who've been making out. School district officials in Tulsa, Oklahoma have placed one of the district's police officers on paid administrative leave because he fired his gun at a vehicle containing a pair of teenagers who were trying to get busy in the car. Uh, the shooting incident happened over the weekend in the parking lot of Elliott Elementary School, of course, Tulsa Fox affiliate. An unidentified school cop fired at the back of the vehicle as a 17-year-old driver was fleeing the scene, according to the real... Tulsa police detectives who later investigated the incident. Yeah, he was told to do that by corporate counsel. Those are our children you're preying on. Okay. Yeah, and the kids in the car were probably doing something that they shouldn't have been, Tulsa police spokesman Chris Payne told. If they weren't dying, they weren't doing anything bad enough to require dying. If they weren't killing each other, they weren't doing anything bad enough to be shot at. Again, those are my children you're preying on. So sensing trouble, or more like uh, the cop was sensing a way he could possibly get a charge in there to meet his quota, uh, the school cop approached the vehicle to find out what was happening. Instead of answering the cop's question, the driver shows the get out of Dodge. School cop said he felt jeopardized by the fact that a confused kid in the midst of a face-sucking session drove away from him. In response, then, he pulled out his gun and shot at the absconding vehicle, striking it with a live bullet in the rear left tire. Tulsa police detectives have since been able to track down the teen driver. The kid told the te detectives that, uh, he drove off because uh, he was just trying to leave. School district officials noted that no one is supposed to make out on school property or enters school property outside of school hours. Yeah, I want to get rid of that school district administrator, too, that condones shooting at my children. Yeah, absolutely. I mean... Very fortunate that uh, it didn't go. It didn't go worse. I mean, like what happened to that baby that got hit in the face with a smoke grenade? Probably be scarred on his face for life. Okay. Well, all of this pain. I mean, he's burnt so badly. He's well, that's why they got him in induced coma. coma. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. They have no care of human life. They're, they're evidencing this. You don't need to go back and, and read the whole 1947 National Security Act. Cops are shooting at our children for making out. At the behest of attorney's policies. School administrators are condoning this. Saying that making out is worse than being shot at. Enough is enough. Sick. Yeah, this is what you're consenting to. This is what you're patronizing. I mean, it's you know, it's it's sad to see the patriots out there that say, "Though we need our constitutional rights," okay, whatever set of rights uh, 
you know, Magna Carta, I guess, if you're over in England. But these things are all yours to begin with. It's just the attorneys came along and said that uh, you don't have these anymore because we just took them from you. Uh, we're gonna, but we're gonna sell them back to you at cost. Legal process. You can buy your rights through our banks. Sick. Okay. So. Quit, quit claiming those things and hold them accountable under the restricted principle of sovereign immunity. To do that, divest title. I showed you how I did it all in the uh, documents there on ChooseYourSite.org at the uh, authorized documents section under a zip file called uh, the uh, Foundation of the Public Law Process. So not a mystery. I think it is complete. I think I I do need to go back and add the uh, notice of ordinance of the states to that, but it's it's a it's a side issue which you don't even really need. At this stage of the game, like we right. said, all you need is the forgiveness an and appointment of the executor document. documents. We can take care of the rest. We'd prefer that you have your own fee schedule. You need to do the ordinance of the states notifying them. Um, but other than that, it's very, very simple. All you have to do is stand as a sovereign state and stop asking for benefits and rights. Yeah, and they need to be recorded as a deed, as a thing done. Yes. Uh, not uh, not filed, filed in county somewhere. county clerk's office or something. They need to be recorded as a, as a deed. Because it's referring to the real property, which is the same you that they've been trafficking all of these years. You are the real property that they refer to in real estate. That's you. And in a uh, salute to the veterans this last weekend, veterans beaten by cops this Memorial Day weekend. Thank you for your service. Uh, backup showed up after Cromwell had handcuffed my grandpa. They began to beat him with his hands behind his back. Not only were they punching his face, but they kicked him in his ribs repeatedly. They also managed to give him a few blows to the head with a baton. Sick. And that guy was a he was a veteran, like I said. Uh, it's just a very sad story there. Enough is enough. They're coming home to be vilified, their houses stolen, their children stolen. And they don't realize until after all of these things occur just how little their government thinks of them. But if you just open your eyes and allow yourself to realize before that happens... Stop teaching your children to patronize this thing. Stop doing these things. And it'll all work out. You just have to get away from it. Step away from that other daddy because you're up for grabs if you're with it. There was a special needs student in Oakland beaten by a school security guard. He was in a wheelchair. And, and, and I saw the video of this I too. I did too. It was sick. Yeah, and it says allegedly beaten by the school security guard. It's right on camera. It's, how how could it be allegedly? Right. He was uh, beaten. Right. Thrown out of his chair. He he slapped me. He hit me so hard. It threw me out of my chair. I hit the floor with my chin first. I had a scar right here. Oakland High School student Francisco Martinez told KTVU, pointing to his chin. Security guard was identified as 23-year-old Marshall Mitchell. School said Mitchell, who was a substitute school resource officer, was urging students to get to class on time on May 19th. Martinez, 17, who has cerebral palsy and is in a wheelchair, either refused to comply or was slow to do so. Principal Matten Abdel Kwai wrote in a letter to parents cited by the San Francisco Chronicle. Mitchell then began to push Martinez's wheelchair. When Martinez objected and tried to slap the guard's hands away, Mitchell allegedly handcuffed the teen to the chair. 
Because you're not complying fast enough. You're not getting your class fast enough. He has cerebral palsy. Uh, I was watching that video. He wasn't doing anything that was aggressive or anything that required any extra he, special handling of any kind. He couldn't. Sick. Plus, he was handcuffed to his wheelchair. Right. Thanks to this Sick. security guard who was helping. At a school that human beings are still putting their children in. These Hitler youth camps that don't have any care for human life. We're coming up on the second hour, um, at the end of the second hour. Uh, do we want to close out with anything or just go out with a song here? Oh, let's see here. Um, you know, just to give you a, a, an idea of the scope, these commercial crimes that attorneys are writing policy for law enforcement to, to follow uh, is what's escalating violent situations in the first place. Incidences like babies getting grenades thrown in their faces and people uh, with uh, disabilities in wheelchairs, uh, you know, getting slapped around. Uh, a whopping 98.7% of marijuana arrests in Illinois cases were just involving simple possession for small amounts too. So Illinois is one of the least friendly places in the nation and those possessing small amounts of uh, marijuana, a new study by Roosevelt University's Illinois Consortium on Drug Policy suggests. So again this is a crime against their revenue stream Okay, and they're going to crack the whip on the people that are patronizing the system, which is almost everybody, because maybe they didn't know any better before. But after listening to our material, you now know better. So what are you going to do about it? Okay, but uh, th this is the kind of stuff that you're you're consenting to, being beat up by policy enforcement thugs at the behest of attorneys that uh, you know are trafficking human beings and what do they give you in return they give you this attorney money that you know IMF has got uh, inflationary control over all uh, currencies globally so what's the IMF that's another group of attorneys okay these people that are so-called uh, IMF uh, whistleblowers what's that attorney's name uh, Hughes or something? Yeah, Karen Hughes, who's made, made the rounds here uh, in the last six months or so. Again, she's just an, another face on, uh, you know, your corporate governance. It's just, you know, it, it's, it's, she's wanting to sell the idea that there are actually good attorneys out there. Ridiculous. What else have you got to say about Karen Hughes? She's an attorney. <laughs> Snake oil salesman. That's all they are. They're, they're, they're just as bad as each other. There's no lesser of two evils. They're, they're absolutely horrifyingly evil um, psychopaths. And, and they've made a kill in it, human trafficking up until now. And, um, you know, and all the kickbacks and arguments I get from all the, um, you know, uh, legal beagles out there, uh, I've yet to anybody come up with any, uh, you know, nobody seems to argue against the fact that uh, these attorney, these attorneys are uh, the cause of the problems. Right. They, they, they've got to be cut loose. Cut them loose. They require a body politic by which to survive. They have no sentient thought. No sentient being. They're just a leech or a bloodsucker on this body politic that you consider yourself a part of. And, and they've defined in their own law that any, any entity that is without sentience, that relies on another body, a body politic, for its survival, is just a waste of space and able to be aborted. If you look under the Roe versus Wade arguments and the abortion arguments that these attorneys have come up with, these attorneys have no sentience. 
They have no human compassion. They have no empathy. They require a body politic for their survival. And they're nothing but leeches. That's right. So we want to thank you for your time being here and support No Borders and Tinosaur. And uh, we'll see you next Friday evening then uh, if everything goes according be well to then